Michelle Prince, founder and CEO of Performance Publishing Group, making a difference one story at a time. We'll be shining the light on successful founders, entrepreneurs, business owners, and leaders that are getting results and making a difference. We'll talk about how they built their businesses, are creating movements, and leveraging the power of authority in their own lives. Be sure to stick around to the end of the show and we'll reveal how you can be our next guest. Let's get started. Hey, everybody, this is Michelle Prince, host of the Power of Authority Spotlight, and we are given the spotlight on Steve Hoffman, but he's really known as Captain Hoff, and I can't wait to dive into this conversation, but let me tell you a little bit about Steve, and, and then we'll start with some questions, but he's chairman and CEO of Founders Space, a global innovation hub for entrepreneurs, corporations, and investors with over 50 partners in 22 countries. He's a venture investor, founder of three venture-backed and two bootstrap startups, and author of several award-winning books, one of which we're going to be talking about today called Surviving the Startup. There's so much more to his background, but I just want to go ahead and welcome him to the show. Welcome, Steve. Thank you for having me, Michelle. It's wonderful to be here. Well, thank you. No, I'm so excited about this conversation because well, I mean, that's really what the show is about, is giving a spotlight on, on other leaders, business owners, but you're doing something specifically in that space to help all of us business owners. So talk a little bit about Founder Space and, and what you do there. So I started Founder Space over a decade ago, and our mission has been to help entrepreneurs all over the world grow and launch new businesses. So how do you, how do you get up? A project off the ground in the early stages? How do you put together a business plan, an investor deck, potentially raise capital, manage your employees, manage your growth, all those different things. And it's been an amazing experience for me personally, because I've also been an entrepreneur. Okay. I ran, uh, before I started Founder Space, I did three venture funded startups in Silicon Valley and two bootstrap startups. So I know what it's like. I know how crazy tough it can be to be an entrepreneur. And by working with all these other entrepreneurs, I've also seen all the different problems entrepreneurs run into and the creative solutions they come up with. I'm so curious. So since you've done both, you've venture backed as well as bootstrap, um, and I actually have experience in, in both as well. What do you say is, I won't say easiest, but what, 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 which way do you prefer or which way do you think is the best route for an entrepreneur to go? So there is no best route. <laughs> There's a best route, but there may be a best route for you individually. Yeah. So for some entrepreneurs, venture is backed as the way to go. Like they have a big vision. It's, uh, it's a winner take all market. If they don't go out and capture it, somebody else will. And the mm -hmm. capital allows, without the capital, they can't do it. Other people want a totally different uh, type of business. They want to run the business themselves. Mm -hmm. They want to run it in their own way. They want to be able to take whatever money they make from that business and put it in their pocket or right. reinvest it in the business, but it's their decision. As soon as you take in outside funding, you are literally taking, it's like getting married. Mm -hmm. And you have uh, uh, partners in there. They have their own objectives. Yes. And if your objectives don't align with theirs, it's a huge mistake. Like mm -hmm. there are some people out there who would be so much happier if they go the bootstrap route than they take in outside money. Yeah. And then there are other people out there who could never achieve their dreams without that outside mm -hmm. money. I know it's such a catch 22. My husband owned a business and it was venture backed. And, 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 and so I've seen both sides and I, I have my own business, but I would say, I, I mean, it's hundred percent bootstrapped. So, you know, I, I could see both sides and there is no right or wrong, but like you said, it really just depends on the business and, and what the ultimate goal is. So how did you, so you've had your own businesses and now that you're helping business owners, are you, are you just aligned in one industry or two or three industries? Like what is your sweet spot in terms of like the kind of companies you help most? So I work with all types of entrepreneurs. Like I just love entrepreneurs who, you know, are passionate about their business. Yeah. They want to make a difference. They want to do something. And so I like to help all types of entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. I'm really good at uh, dissecting a business model. Okay. And where I tend to add a lot of value is when an entrepreneur uh, comes into our program and they need to figure out where the market is. Because there's mm -hmm. a lot of entrepreneurs who've sort of, they've had some success, but yeah. then it's kind of stalled. Like they're, they're in a place and they can't get to that next level. So what about 
your business can actually take it to the next level? How can you make this a much more profitable, much uh, faster growing business than you've had in the past? And, and you'd be surprised. Entrepreneurs, uh, they, they don't see it because they haven't had that experience. Right. Too close to it too. Sometimes you yes. just need an outsider look in. Yes. So talk about what the service is. And so do you do that on a one-on-one -on -one basis where you give input into someone's business? Is this a, a, a mastermind, a group type of so thing? We, we run different programs. So okay. we run all sorts of, we run big training programs with lots mm -hmm. of entrepreneurs who come in and we train them. We also do one-on-one -on -one. and it oh, really depends. Wow. The, the further along the company, the more time we can usually invest on a one-on-one -on -one relationship because they're already going and they need really strategic, specific help. But even in our big groups, we break it up into a lot of one-on-one -on -one sessions because okay. people need, you know, it's, it's one thing to get general information. It's another thing to get information about your specific problems that you're facing. Mm, so, so true. I, yeah. There's so much here. I, I definitely, I want to dive into all of these different pieces even more. I, I, I want to start though how did you get here? I know you've had other businesses, but you know, to, to have the founder space and, and, and to really be, you've done so many different things, but what, what is the backstory? What is the, the, the backstory? You, you weren't is, born as a, <laughs> no, no, I was not. So tell us how you got here. I like to say I've had more careers than cats have had lives. Oh gosh. <laughs> which, you know, I have done all sorts of things. I yeah. worked in Hollywood as a TV development executive. I was, mm -hmm. I worked for General Motors in their uh, designing their circuits for, for cars. I worked wow in video games, creating video games, both of my own and for, you know, big game companies. I worked in animation as a voice actor. I helped manga, which are Japanese comic books, rewrite those. I've just done so. And, you know, now I'm a venture capitalist. I'm yeah. a teacher. I'm an author. So, and I run Founders Space, which is an incubator. Yeah. So I've done many, many different things. Uh, throughout my life, though, I've always, and this is where I, I love working with entrepreneurs because I yeah. always want a new challenge. I always want to push the limits of what I'm capable of and the people around me are capable of. Mm -hmm. So I, my guiding fundamental philosophy was, I don't, be, I believe that I could do anything I set my mind to. So mm -hmm. whatever crazy yeah. career it is, you know, wh whether it was going out in Hollywood and writing scripts and, you know, <laughs> getting television shows and working, doing that whole thing, whatever, or going to Japan and working on video games, whatever it was, I thought, well, if there's an amazing opportunity, why not take it? Like why you don't, why not? you don't have, oh, you're the only one who can tell yourself no, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you could say, sure. no, I, I couldn't do, or you could say, no, I'll go try it. I'll see what happens. In, some of the things I did didn't work out. Like not every project took off yeah. that I did. I had, pro you know, projects out there that were hits and projects mm -hmm. out there that were misses, <laughs> but you know, I wouldn't be where I am now if I didn't do that, you yeah. know? And after my third venture funded startup, I was literally taking a break. And this is how founder space start. All my friends started to just come to me and say, captain oh. off. <laughs> yeah, help. How do help. I, raise, how do I get my company off the ground? You've done so many things. How do I do it? And I started to help them and it grew organically. Wow. Yep. But that's impressive. I mean, that says a lot about you as well. If, you know, for people to be coming to you, asking for your advice and you giving it, you know, after having all these businesses, you probably didn't need to start founder space. So this is your way of giving back. Yeah. So founder space is bootstrapped. I literally did it out of, uh, it was, it, it's, it's a passion project. It was something mm -hmm. that I just wanted. I didn't want to take in money because it becomes something totally different. Right. So I just decided I'm going to do what I want to do and I'm going to do it with the people I want. And I'm going to make those decisions. And that's what I've been doing. I love it. So the show is called the power of authority. And what I mean by authority is really the ability to make a bigger impact, influence people. And, and, you know, there's so many different ways to do that. I, I love doing you know, books and podcasting and all that. But I'm curious for your businesses that you're, that are, you know, in the incubator and that you're helping to grow, what are some ways that you help them to build their own authority? And how important do you think authority is to scaling a business? So I think it's absolutely critical. So the number one thing you need to be, if you're going to grow a business and be successful is a great leader. Mm -hmm. You can get people who are great uh, at all sorts of other things, great marketers, great salespeople, great coders, great designers, whatever you need, you can find somebody who's better than you are at. 
But what you, what's irreplaceable for growing a business is somebody who is able to get those people motivated on the team, buying into the vision mm. at an early stage when okay. you don't have a lot of money. So how do you do this, right? You do this by having, you have to have authority, right? They yeah. have to, by authority, I mean, you have to give people the opportunity to see your vision and believe in your vision and believe mm. in you as a leader, like that you yeah. can make this actually happen because mm. is somebody going to quit their great paying job? You know, it could be six figures and join your little idea company. Mm -hmm. uh, why are they going to do that? So what great leaders do, why they have authority is they are able uh, not just to say I'm great and I, you know, yeah. I, I'm the CEO and you should listen to me because nobody really cares. What they're really good at doing is understanding other people. So mm. what motivates people? Money is one thing, but I will tell you, you're never going to be able to compete with Google or Microsoft or any big company out there uh, based on your, your most entrepreneurs, unless you're already rich, mm -hmm. you know, based on writing them a check. You're never going to compete on that. What you can compete on them though, and you can win is on dreams. So mm. what are those people you want to attract? What are their dreams? What is the mission? Think about your company as a mission, right? Mm -hmm. You may, what authority you have is what authority that you can, your authority can be comprised of your mission, right? Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be just about you. You don't have to believe in me. Believe in what we're doing and not what I'm doing, what we are doing together. So if you want to make the fishing industry more sustainable, because, mm -hmm. you know, we're wiping out fish populations, they're mm -hmm. polluting the oceans, you know, it's horrible working conditions, all these things on these big fishing boats. Yeah. If you want to do that and you believe in that, I'm going, I'm the one to help you take you there. Join me and let's go there together and make a big difference. If you want to make the restaurant business serve healthier, better food, be more transparent, treat its workers better, whatever it is, that's your mission. Then find people who share that mission and people with expertise you don't have, you know, some with technological expertise, mm -hmm. others with design, others who know that industry, bring them together as a leader around you. And all of you focus on the mission. Great leaders, you look at them like Steve Jobs or Elon Musk or, you know, Bill Gates or any of them, they were on a mission. You know, yeah. Elon Musk is literally on a mission to Mars, right? If you yes, literally SpaceX, you are buying into his mission. Tesla, he's on a mission to reinvent the auto industry, right? Yeah. Take it electric. You, everybody can have a mission. It doesn't have to be as big as going to Mars. It could be a much smaller mission. Like we're going to, you know, be the best, most environmentally impactful landscaping business in our city, right? Yes, <laughs> it doesn't yes. have to be a big one. And everybody, and we're going to go around to every household and tell them why they can afford to do this and why it's good for the environment. You know, we're in a drought where I am in California. Mm -hmm. Like there are literally people shouldn't have lawns, right? Lawns right. for the climate we're in. It's just like, it's, it, there isn't the water for that. So you, that could be your mission. I'm just yeah. saying for every business, there can be a great mission that you can rally people around. And getting the team, you just made such a great point that it's not just you. And I, I, I don't know if you see this, but a lot of small business entrepreneurs, I mean, they start just themselves and then they may add one person and then two people. And, and it's hard to get that mindset around shifting from it being just a solopreneur to, oh, wait, I have to move into a leadership role. I, I'm just still doing what I was doing before. And now I have some extra help, <laughs> you know? Exactly. So, and, 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 and that's think, a hard transition. And if you think they're working for you, you're wrong. They're not working for you. Like right. bad leaders uh, uh, use their authority that you work for yeah. me, you do what yeah. I say. <laughs> Great leaders have them work for a bigger idea, mm -hmm. right? have them work for themselves and they get people on who really believe what they believe and want to make this great, right? Yeah. They want to do it together. So that, that is that the authority comes not from just you being the boss, right? right. That doesn't mean anything because they can go get another boss. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> the authority comes from you actually empowering them to achieve what they've always wanted to, to achieve. And, and that's the key with leadership. I'm very passionate about leadership and I, a, a great leader, the better the leader you are, the more you are elevating your people. It's about making them better people, not just better productive 
producers for you, but it's right. You know, what are their dreams? What do you really want? And, and in fact, I do a bunch of leadership training in, in corporate right now. And I, the, you can tell a good leader and a bad leader instantaneously because it's like, what, what's this all about? You know, is, are you in your role to elevate them or are they there to elevate you? And that's a manager. That's not a leader. <laughs> that, there. That's absolutely right. Yeah. And then I have another rule for really great leaders. Yeah. And it's the rule is ask, don't tell. Mm, so it's a yes. very, very simple rule. When you go into your team every single day, don't say, you do this, you do that. D don't do this. Don't do that. That's not being great leadership. Great leadership is where you go in every day. You look at each person and you ask them. What is your top priority today? Mm. Uh, why, why is that your top priority? How are you going to get it done? How could you get it done better? Every time you ask somebody, boom, it turns a light on in their brain. Oh, the boss is asking me, how could I do this oh. better? Like, mm -hmm. there must be a way to do this. You don't have to have the answer. Like, great leaders don't have the answer. Like, it's not your job to know how they could code it better or design it better or market it better. But you can always ask. You know, is there another way? Have you considered if there's something else out there that you saw, like an article or something? Have you considered this? What do you think of this? You know, doing it this way yeah. would that improve how we're doing it? You uh, by ask if you literally, and I want to challenge every one of your listeners out there, literally for the next week, with everybody you interact with, try not to tell them to do anything. Try always to ask them. It's not easy. That right? is so good. Yes, you're it's so right. Really, but literally you can get this, everything you want done through asking the right questions, not telling. Mm -hmm. And you, what you do is you suddenly empowered your people. You put them in a position where they are forced to actually go beyond themselves and start to think. You uh, put them in a position where you're not just telling them, you know, you have to do it by this deadline in this way, or, or I'm not going to be happy. And here are my ideas. No, all of a sudden you've activated all these other brains around you that are coming up with stuff and, you know, like, oh, the bosses expect once somebody else commits to you says, oh, I think I could do it this way mm -hmm. uh, that we've never tried before. And I, could, I think we could do it in half the time. All of a sudden they've committed to that. Mm -hmm. You didn't force them. No. They told you that. Now they feel really responsible to live up to that. Like that's so gonna... true. Yes. That's your next book, Captain. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that is your next book. Let's talk about your book, though, Surviving a Startup. And what, what are some of the biggest nuggets in that book? Obviously, you wanna, we want you to buy that book and you know, go to Amazon or wherever to get it. But what are some of the biggest takeaways for somebody who's in a startup mode right now? So one that? of the biggest ideas is don't worry about having the epiphany, the great idea. Like everybody thinks, ah, oh, to be a, to do a great business, you have to have this brilliant idea. You don't. Most of the great ideas out there came about after the company was started. Okay. Not before. So you look, I'll give you an example. YouTube, we, the, the founders of YouTube, I, I know them. They didn't actually come up with the idea. We're going to reinvent, uh, you know, broadcast media online. We're going to be the biggest video portal in the world. They didn't, they didn't come up with that. What they were building at the beginning was a dating site, a video <laughs> dating site. And you know, people, they don't like to date by video. They don't want to yeah. meet a stranger the first time on video, right? Yeah. But that's what they were building. They were failing. It was only later when they were, when things weren't working out and they had to share a large video file with their friends, they wanted yeah. to share it. They said, oh, we built this site for dating. We could upload it there and just send the link. Oh my God. Boom. Upload it and send the link everything else followed. Yelp, we all use Yelp. Mm -hmm. Yelp, the feature for rating, uh, giving something five stars was an afterthought. It was a oh. side feature. It, be it became the whole product. Slack, you know, so many corporations mm -hmm. use Slack today. Slack was a game. It was a game that was failing. Oh my. And the, and the, the people the, the CEO looked at his engineers and he's like, oh, all of you have kind of hacked together an instant messaging and you're collaborating together really well. I mean, our game isn't working, but I mean, you did a really good job building this game that doesn't work that nobody wants. Wow. What if we took what you did, this, this hack, and actually made that the product? Oh my I am goodness. telling you, don't wait for the idea. Yeah. Get great people. Spend 80% of your time as a leader, 
as an authority figure, hunting down the most amazing people who share your overall direction, you, mm. the area you want to go and innovate on, you want to make a difference on, you want to grow, find those people, motivate them, and then start the process of discovery. Mm -hmm. Being uh, Starting a business is about going into the real world and engaging with people. So let's take that restaurant idea. You know, okay. I want to transform the restaurant business. Well, how do you do it? Most great innovators come from the outside because if you're on the inside, you're too busy doing everything the yeah. way it's always been done. Like you don't have any time. So you come from the outside, but you don't know this business. What you want to do is go into the restaurants, talk to the owners, talk to the chefs, talk to the waiters, everybody, the distributors, vendors, all the different people, find out where they are doing things in a way that requires a lot of work, uh, you know, a lot of sweat or an, a lot of pain that they don't even know it could be done differently. Wow. Like, because we've always done it this way. Like we've yeah. done it this way for 50 years. Like this is how the food is shipped. This is how this is done, you know, prepare. No, actually with this new technology, you could, we could get mm. that done in half the time at half the cost. Yeah. When you go in there and you look, and then that's, they're not going to build your pro product, but they are going to tell you if you're very observant and you really ask the right questions and listen mm -hmm. where, what they want, what outcomes they want. Oh, I, you know, right now, a lot of restaurants uh, in the U S are short on staff. Like I just can't find good people. Right. Yeah. How, how, okay. I'm going to go in there with technology. I'm going to figure out how we can make the people you do have so much more productive. Right. So that you, that, uh, it, or, or, you know, or certain positions, we're going to automate them. Right. That is where you create what I call extreme value. Mm. When you create extreme value for a customer, mm -hmm. then your business just explodes on its own. That is so good. Uh, so look, what, what do you do? So since then we're talking about startups and one of the biggest hurdles for a startup that didn't get funding is, is cash, right? So you mentioned finding a good team and getting, you know, good people and all that. How, how do you help people to do that when they don't necessarily have the cash to go hire a really great, great person, but they desperately need them to take the business to the next level. You have one thing that's more valuable than cash. Okay. And that is equity in your company, mm -hmm. sharing your ownership. And then the second thing is sharing your vision. Wow. So you have to have people, you have to, you have to, it's not easy, right? Mm -hmm. You have to spend the time to find people who really believe in what you're doing, right? Mm. And really see the potential there and have the means to actually potentially leave a good paying job and yeah. join you to do this. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, you, you offer them, you can offer them a share of equity. You can offer them a revenue share. Like mm -hmm. if they're out there and they're closing deals yeah. for you, you can get them to work part-time for you until you raise enough money. Oh, there's a lot of, a lot of different things. ways. Yes. So don't let that be the barrier is what, what you're it saying. It should never it, be the barrier. Yeah. And also when you're going out into the real world, remember there's not one great idea out there. There's mm. a zillion great ideas and there's many more, an infinite number of new ideas being born every, all, all the time, right? Okay. So pick an idea that you can do without a lot of money, unless you're already rich or already famous and you can, and you have a huge track record and you can raise a lot of money, pick an idea that you can start to prove out with just your time, with mm. your time and effort. If you can do that, see what investors want, like to get the real money mm -hmm. is they want us, they want you to actually show them that there are customers out there who, when they, th that are, that when they hear about your product, they're like, oh my God, I got to have that. Like mm. I have to have your product today. Yeah. If you can do that. You have a, you can raise money. Okay. If you can do that, you might not need to raise money because you can maybe yeah. be able to get the customers to pay you in advance. Yes. If they're big corporations, a lot of times they can write you a check in advance. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I started companies that way. Like literally I went out there and just found people who are ready to write big companies that were ready to write checks because yeah. they needed something so bad and nobody was coming to them with anything. And you're like, here I am. I can do this for you. Even though we hadn't built it, they wrote yeah. us the check. So that is the great way to start your business. Such great advice. Wow. So what would, uh, first of all, what is the criteria for somebody to be a part of founder space and what is the process to, to get involved? Ah, so super 
uh, uh, it's super easy. You just go to founderspace.com. That's our website, Founderspace. And we have applications out there. We have applications for our workshops. We have applications for other things. We also have just tons of free material, like tons of videos, tons of like startup materials, you know, lots of stuff to just help entrepreneurs get off the ground for no money. Because I know a lot of people don't have a lot of money and we want to help them get there. Yeah, absolutely. That is a huge resource. Definitely take and, advantage of this. And, and I'm <laughs> going to give your audience something special. So we have a special URL that you can get the 10 commandments of venture of raising venture capital mm. for free by going to founderspace slash 10, T-E-N or the number 10. Either one will get you there. Okay. Founderspace forward slash 10. Yep. Is that right? Okay. Okay. That's a huge, I'm definitely going to be downloading that. And I'm sure every, people listening will as well. Um, so what has been one book or person over the last year or two that has really impacted you, inspired you, or, or, or some things you've learned that you want to share? Ah, so I will tell you, I uh, read a new book literally every week. Mm -hmm. I am, I am a, a because you know, when you get a book, you get all that person's years of thinking distilled yes. down their best ideas. So I'm I just, I just, there's so many amazing books. What I do encourage people to do is read books, uh, read books that are right on the target of what you want to do. So if mm -hmm. you're doing a startup, read startup books. If you do want to know marketing, read marketing book. Also read books that are not on target books about psychology and anthropology and physics because these books suddenly open up ideas for you that you mm -hmm. never thought of like i'm reading a book i'll just tell you right, right what i'm reading today right okay so i'm reading right now a book by robert schiller he's a yale professor of economics mm -hmm. and he uh writes about narrative it's called narrative economics so about how storytelling has influenced economics throughout history fascinating book. He goes into everything from, you know, modern history, like Bitcoin, the narrative around Bitcoin, yeah. to ancient history, you know, like the Great Depression. What were the narratives around the Great Depression? What were the narratives around all these different periods of time and different things and how they change how we view the world? Oh, that sounds so fascinating. Yeah. So I'm always looking for new books like that. Like, yeah. you know, that <laughs> I love that about you. And I can just tell it. So you, one, you mentioned mindset early on, that that was something that, that you, you know, stay focused on Two, You're constantly developing and learning. There's never, I mean, you, you could probably sit back and not learn much more. Right. But, but that constant learner, uh, what's, what else would you say as we kind of wrap this up? What, what else do you think for anybody starting a business or taking the business to the next level is a must have that, that in order to really guarantee their success. I'd say they've done studies and mm -hmm. these studies are counterintuitive sometimes. One study is that it's not the number of hours you work that makes you successful. And so you, a lot of the most successful CEOs in the world do not work, you know, 60, 80 hour weeks, something right. insane like that. They, uh, but it's the decisions you make. Mm. So remember, you can work day and night, sweat like a crazy. And if you're headed in the wrong direction, all you do is get to the wrong place faster. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't help you, right? Yeah. You're, just, you're working like crazy, but you're going the wrong direction. Much better to step back and analyze. And how do you analyze mm. something when you're really close to your business? You analyze it by having discussions with other really smart people about your mm. business. So too few people, and myself included, do this often enough. Yeah. A lot of times we think we know we're in the business, we know best, right? Mm -hmm. Honestly, talk about your business to lots of other people. Hmm. Talk about your real problems you're having the real problems and talk about them to really smart people with different perspectives that will do more that feedback, that dialogue, getting their person. Oh, you, have you thought of this? Have you thought of that? Why are you doing it that way? Yeah. You know, they're going to, that will do more for helping you and your everything about, you know, your psychology, everything than anything else you do. That's yes. So I, absolutely, because somebody's going to see something that you can't see, you're too close to it. Um, and we, we do need community too. Right. And a lot of times we're working on the wrong problems. We're solving the wrong yeah. problems. We're focused, we're obsessed with something and it's not yeah. a big deal. And we're spending tons of time on it. Yes. 
Wow. Well, you make it sound so simple. <laughs> ah, I know it's not. <laughs> I know it's well, but, but to the point that, but that's why you have this, this, this space too, to help yeah. these businesses and to, um, you know, help them survive the startup, <laughs> you know, exactly. period of their life. Um, how can people get your book? First of all, Oh, you can go to, well, it's on Amazon on everywhere. It's published by Harper Collins. So you Very can go good. to surviving a startup.com and you can find it there or Amazon. And if they want to reach out to me, I'm super yes. easy to find founderspace.com or I'm on every social network. LinkedIn is a great one. Just search for Captain Hoff, Steve Hoffman uh, on LinkedIn. Last question. How did the name Captain Hoff come about? It was my gamer handle in my very early day. Remember I said I was a game designer. Yes. So yes, I, it was my gamer handle. Okay. I love that. Well, Captain Hoff, thank you so much for being on the show. I am so inspired. I know people listening are going to be taking notes. Definitely take advantage of some of the resources, founderspace.com forward slash 10. Get his book, Surviving a Startup, and go to founderspace.com for more information. So thank you again so much for being on the show. Thank you, Michelle. All right, that's it for today. We'll see you next time on the Power of Authority Spotlight. Have a great one. so much for listening to the Power of Authority Spotlight. If you are a successful founder, entrepreneur, business owner, or leader that's getting results and making a difference, and you'd like to be on this program, please visit performancepublishinggroup.com forward slash podcast to apply. That's performancepublishinggroup.com forward slash podcast. Also, if you got something out of this interview, please share this episode. Just do a quick screenshot with your phone and text it to a friend or post it on the socials. If you know someone that would be a great guest, tag them on social media to let them know about the show and include the hashtag, the power of authority spotlight. I love seeing your posts and guest suggestions. We are regularly putting out new episodes and content, so make sure you don't miss any episodes by subscribing. Your thumbs up, ratings, and reviews go a long way to help promote the show and mean a lot to me and my team. Want to know more? Go to our website, performancepublishinggroup.com or michelleprince.com. And follow me on LinkedIn, Facebook, and Instagram. Thanks so much for listening, and we'll see you next time.